Tim, thanks very much for, for joining us from Atlanta. Happy to be here with you. Thank you for your interest, Matt. Great. Okay. So I guess a, a good place to start would be, you know, the, the airline, you know, Delta's had a rich, rich history of re rewarding its employees um, and in turn creating a brand advocates from internally, from inside the company. How, uh, can you tell us a bit about how that came about and, and, and how that's sort of working today? Yeah, so Delta's founder, C.E. Woolman, uh, was a big believer in a very simple concept. And, and while it's simple uh, conceptually, it, it's maybe more difficult to actually put into practice. But his idea was simply that if we took better care of Delta customer people, customer service representatives, they in turn would take better care of, of the customer. So I call it kind of brand-led culture where you, you, you want the external facing elements of Delta to be about the warmth and the service and the hospitality. But the way that you actually enable that isn't direct making a promise to the customer that you then put your people in a position to fail at. It's quite the opposite. It's actually supporting first the, the very people who interact most with the customer and, and really kind of branding from the inside out. So it's let's first capture the hearts and the minds of our employees by taking better care of them. And we do that with everything from really greater job security and cultural uh, reinforcement, uh, but also things like profit sharing and some things that I'm sure we'll talk about. Uh, but it's based on this very simple idea of we'll take better care of our people. They will in turn take better care of the customer and that has been a formula that has been at play here at Delta for more than 80 years, and, and that's worked quite well. How does, you know, how does that kind of mantra transfer from either a person-to-person -person experience to a kind of, I guess, a more digital experience today? Well, you know, we, we kind of think of that as high-tech, high-touch, uh, where it isn't just automation and technology for the sake of having whiz-bang apps or, or whiz-bang functionality. Uh, we start with, again, I, what I think is a pretty simple concept, I call it listen, respond, listen. We spend a lot of time in market research listening to what it is customers are telling us. And we do that in, in proprietary research, secondary research, social media inquiries, customer complaints, uh, things that our corporate sales uh, accounts are telling us. Corporate travel managers say, hey, it'd be like nice to have more of this and less of that. Uh, and then actually listening with an intent to act. So it isn't just listening and then it goes into a file folder somewhere. It's we're really, really operating with a bias toward action. And it, not just action, but speed to act. So we do a lot of listening. Then we quickly bake that into products and services and concepts and new ideas uh, that are designed to demonstrate to the customers we seek to serve Delta's true intent by not just listening to them, but with responding with new ideas and the things they say they would value uh, were we to do it, and then listen again and say, did we get it right? Were we close? Did we, were we off base entirely and things like that? And as you might imagine, any airline of our size, we carry 190 million passengers a year and, and serve over 60 countries. There are a lot of different voices in a lot of different distinct segments. So it isn't just a generic listen to everybody, although that is in fact how we gather the information, but it's really across different segments, business travelers, leisure, international, domestic, corporate travel managers. So it's everybody who could have a, a voice in what the experience might ideally be. And really then with a bias toward action, listening to that, responding with new things and then listening again and using that as a cycle. So it's, it's not a one-time event. I, I always tell people it's not like uh, what we call here in the States, you know, flea dip, where you dip the animal and, and you know, it's a one-time thing and then they're cured of fleas. It's a recurring process because we're constantly hiring new people. We're constantly serving new customers who are perhaps experiencing Delta for the first time. And it's really more about an operational mindset and, and a mentality than it is a, an event, if you will. I'm wondering if there's anything that comes to mind off the top of your head, Tim, that shows that kind of iterative process where you've kind of gone... Let's take some data in, let's see how that looks, let's implement some change, then let's measure again. Is there anything that kind of springs to mind for that? Yeah, well, there's lots of them because it's literally what we do every single day. But I'll give you a real-time, uh, real-life example. Delta had, uh, a number of years ago, looked at high-value customers. So the reality is about 5% of Delta's customers around the world represent 26% of our revenue. And so there's a sliver of particularly high value customers that have and represent a disproportionate amount of value. 
they were mixed in, uh, and, and you may have seen my, my comment about trying to make people feel like one in a million or a hundred million rather than one of a hundred million. So these 5% of our customers were mixed in with large numbers of people. And, and so while we would call for boarding and the segmentation typically was first class or economy, the reality was these high value customers were waiting in line and blended within other customers who, while they're of great value to Delta, perhaps didn't represent the same degree of disproportionate value. And so we put uh, heart monitors on people and we did what you might know as ethnographic research to say, let's literally monitor these high value customers' heart rates and identify where they're seeing stress in our customer experience. So you travel around the world, you check me on this, but you wake up in the morning and you realize, okay, I'm flying today and your heart starts racing. You get in the shower and you get ready, you kind of calm down, but you get in your car, you're driving to the airport, your heart goes up again, calms down when you get to the airport, but then it goes up again when you're looking for a parking space, calms down, you get out, then you're going to, through security, your heart rate goes up again, calms down after you're through security, races again at gate when you know you have to get on the plane and there's all these people trying to go through a narrow jetway. And, it, and we looked at all of those, and whether it's reclaiming your luggage or your experience after the flight, what we saw were there were 11 moments of truth, as we called them, that were the particular spikes where these people's heart rate went up. And so we said, okay, those are the moments where if we can do a better job of providing relief for those customers or a more differentiated experience where they don't feel they're waiting in line, um, or when they're calling our reservation sales office, they get right to a rep. It isn't somebody where they're waiting for five minutes to talk with somebody. Service recovery in the event a flight's delayed or, or uh, ultimately, uh, regrettably, canceled. Those types of things. How do we get these people out of that process such that they're protected from that? And in those moments of truth, we created something called Sky Priority, which is when you travel and you're a high mileage frequent flyer on Delta, uh, we have separate lanes. So you board first. Your luggage comes off the carousel first because we identify the baggage of these customers. If in the event a flight is going to be delayed, we use automation to rebook these passengers onto the next available flight before anybody else. And it's examples like that uh, that are real, that, that are, again, starting with a basic pr pr uh, principle that these customers represent disproportionate value. We don't want them to wait how do you bring that to life throughout the totality of the customer experience? So that's something called Sky Priority, but it's the same thing that's driven uh, incremental bandwidth on Wi-Fi, flatbed seats, greater personal storage on, on the airplane. And you can do it simply by listening to customers complain. I always kind of refer to it like a, a maitre d' at a restaurant where you go into a restaurant and they come up and say, how was your meal? You can tell as a customer if that person is sincere and is empowered to act or if they're just pandering and, and patronizing. And if, if you say something to a maitre d' and say, well, the food was cold or this was good or that was bad, and they actually act, that's memorable, that's different from the vast majority of restaurants, and, and that in our space is what we want to be. We want to always have the passengers back. We want to bring our culture to life that we genuinely are deeply caring and respectful for passenger time, and we try to bring that to life in products, but also in services and, and through our own frontline employees. Mm. And so listen, that, that sort of that nice little tidbit of listening to your your passengers complain, where are you kind of listening to them? Where's the, where's the bulk of that listening coming from? Yeah, so passengers write in, as you might imagine. We have a customer care group uh, that receives letters uh, from people who bring about every type of different situation to us. And a lot of people in a lot of companies and cultures really just kind of take that and say, okay, this is about appeasement or this is about try to quash uh, somebody perhaps having a negative experience on us. We look at it quite differently. It, the number of people who write into us with a letter of complaint is actually somebody who's engaging in a relationship with us and we, we want to foster that. So I wouldn't necessarily say we encourage complaints, but we actually try to make it incredibly easy to complain. If you look at Delta.com in the upper right of the, the screen is a comments and complaints link that allows you to click on it once and to enter into a data field because we want to hear from customers. And if we've done something that's let a customer down or that hasn't lived up to our brand promise that we will always be the good guys trying to make flying better for customers, then it's incredibly valuable to us for, for us to know that. And we also do 
outbound surveys. So each time somebody flies Delta, we're able to send them a, an out post flight survey to say, hey, how was this? How was that? And you, you would believe, uh, you know, a lot of people might say, okay, all well, that information then goes into the ether. The letters of complaint, those types of survey responses go right into our chief operating officer, who on a weekly basis can take all of that data. And the response rates are incredibly high, and they're high because customers know we're using it because they see the application of that information back in enhancements to their customer experience. Um, and so we try to close the loop and say, hey, thank you for your complaint. Here's what we heard. Here's what we've done about it. Look for this on your next flight. Uh, and that cumulative data across 190 million passengers all over the world over the course of a year gives us enormous power because we can go to the station level to actually the customer service representative level and know how we're doing um, in each of these situations and use that information to try to make things better. How do you kind of manage that data deluge? How do you kind of sit, like sniff out the data that, that's valuable and meaningful? And how do you kind of go, okay, we can hear this and we can see this, but it's not worth spending too much time on? Yeah, so uh, we, we have uh, an entire customer insights and analytics group, and we have within the operating groups, groups that sole function is to surface data and to develop and bring insights forward to say, uh, here's what we're doing right, and, and here's perhaps still an area of opportunity for us. Uh, and we use net promoter scores, uh, most notably, and we track the likelihood that our customers will recommend Delta the next time they fly to either a friend or a family member or a colleague. Uh, and it has been remarkably consistent as we break down net promoter scores on board or in our airports or with our digital functionality, what it is customers are telling us they value. And as we invest in those areas, you see it really quickly. We measure net promoter scores on a monthly basis. We gather that data. As I said, we on a weekly basis meet with our chief operating officer as well as our CEO and our president to say, hey, here's what's going on. And each of those data sets are used to frame business cases for here's what's next. And the orientation of the company isn't, as I said, a one-off event that, okay, we're going to buy a new plane or we're going to do Wi-Fi. It's having a queue of innovations that are constantly in development such that some are being released, some are being refined, and some are still being developed uh, across all elements of the customer experience so that th those things are constantly being informed by customer information. And then, as I said, the listen, respond, listen, it's on the back end. Did it pay out? Were customers more likely to recommend Delta? And I will tell you, over the last five years, that formula has literally driven every investment we've made and really uh, a huge, driven a huge increase in our net promoter scores that uh, are, again, helping us feel good about those investments and that approach. And do, and do, you, do you structure do you, or separate customer experience or do you have like kind of like pockets for... Yeah, the sort of digital kind of experience for customers, and then you have like pockets for the in airport experience, and then ones for in flight. Or do you see it as more kind of coherent whole? Structurally, we integrate it uh, as marketing and as the product group. As I said, serving as the eyes and the ears of customers horizontally. So it's as the customer experience is dealt with. We think that's really important because how we operate is vertically. So you have in flight the flight attendants, or flight operations the pilots, or airport customer service the staff in the airports, reservation sales, and things like that. So while we have vertical silos, if you will, in terms of each operating area, customers actually don't experience the airline that way. Customers experience it horizontally. So I wake up, I check in, or I book my ticket, I go to the airport, I get on the plane, or I go to the lounge, and things like that. So marketing views it across that thread of what we call the travel ribbon or the journey, and then we work and integrate uh, holistically and enterprise-wide as a company with each of those vertical operating units to say, hey, here's how each piece uh, interacts and here's what customers are telling us about that. So online check-in is our e-commerce unit and our airport customer service group, whereas the airport functionality tends to be the airport customer service group, perhaps uh, with some digital functionality and things like that, the lounges uh, as you go forward. So. It's, a, it's a, to me, a nice way of trying to organize around how customers experience Delta, but in a way where you actually have the vertical subject matter expertise to pre precisely know how to do that at over 300 airports around the world or on over 4,000 flights.
And so, you know, Delta and, and it's and I've you know, reading some of your work, Tim, like it describes itself as kind of human, very personable airline. How do you kind of like replicate that experience online? Yeah, I, I, you know, I think it's the same approach where if you go out and listen to customers, the great example of this to me is, is Apple and, and Microsoft, where Apple paid more attention to the way customers were interacting with its technology and Microsoft arguably paid more attention to the true functionality. Uh, they're both different strategies, but and they're both obviously winning from a, from an organizational standpoint. But it's really which two things do you choose to lean into? And, and for us, as I mentioned, with high tech, high touch, if you start with saying customers, how are they interacting with Delta? What do they need and when do they need it? And how do they interact with us? You get at things like speed, simplicity, intuitiveness. Uh, you know, customers don't find value in a lot of the process that airlines subject them to, right? What value do you get as a customer when you check in? You know, that's an airline process. When you make a connection, your preference might be a nonstop, but you're finding yourself connecting through a hub. So everything an airline can do to truly listen to that and say, okay, don't think like an airline. Think like a customer. And whether it's automation and digital functionality, whether it's human touch and one-on-one -on -one interactions with a frontline customer service agent, whether it's relationship marketing and management on the back end and the types of tone and manner that we employ with those communications, and, and even if we've let you down as a customer, us owning that and us responding to that with uh, what are authentic and genuine and meaningful customer service and service recovery tools, it all really emanates from if we were customers, what would we want? In fact, I mentioned CE Woman, Delta's founder. He had this other great saying, put yourself on the other side of the counter. Essentially, put yourself in your customer's shoes. What is it you want? What is it you need? And then think about how we apply that uh, here at Delta. And, and I'm not saying by any stretch of the imagination we're perfect or even that we're done. But when you do that and it's authentic and it's genuine and it's more authentic and genuine and fast than your competitors, you start to distance yourself and differentiate yourself on elements that customers care about. And, and I think that's where Delta is in this process. How do you kind of continue to, to keep yourself a, you know, ahead of the competition, both in the digital and you know, in an in airline experience? Hey, that's a, a great question and I'll give you the very easy answer. It's don't pay attention to other airlines. If you look at what's driving service excellence today, it isn't necessarily other airlines. We no longer feel uh, that the answers to Delta's opportunities to improve are in the airline space at all. They are in digital spaces and what can we learn from Amazon? What can we learn from Disney? What can we learn from other world leading companies that are fantastic at different dimensions of that, that travel ribbon? So Disney's ability to use queue management and to always make you feel like you're not in line a long time one way or another, even if you happen to be in line. Amazon with perpetual login and simple one-click checkout. You know, Uber, uh, not necessarily a Halo brand at the moment because of some of their uh, cultural issues, but from a functionality standpoint, the simplicity, the ease, uh, the recurring ability to just use a mobile device to do whatever it is you need versus some of the historic things that people saw with taxis or, or with uh, car rental, right? And so I, I think it's, it's us looking at world-class companies that don't have anything to do with airlines and have everything to do with how are they better serving customers um, because the faster we can get to those places, again, the faster we differentiate ourselves and separate ourselves from air travel brand comparisons, uh, which to us are increasingly less relevant. We're about world-class service, and we want to compare ourselves to other world-class people who can do that, however they define that. Hmm. And so what, is the, what does the future look like then you know, from this perspective? Like how, does the, how does Delta see the customer experience digitally going forward? Well, you know, I, I think for us it starts with customer segmentation. Uh, again, it's all about having folks who, when they choose Delta, feel they're having more of a personalized, individualized experience, uh, but within the volumes that, that we deal with. You, know, you might imagine carrying 190 million people a year. That's quite an undertaking. Uh, it's a hell of a lot even bigger undertaking when you try to make each of those people feel that they're having an individualized experience. And so... The use of data in identifying distinct segments within. So in the past, of course, it was premium and economy, or it was business class and, and leisure, uh, as I mentioned, international and domestic. For us, there's hundreds of distinct segments. There are 
senior people who have worked all their lives seeking now the opportunity to travel and see the world. There's millennial college backpackers who are starting to see the world, but in a very different way than perhaps seniors who've worked hard and saved up money to, for, to finally travel. Um, and I think it's all the different elements and segments in between. Uh, if there's business travelers, there might be people whose company allows them to travel in the front of the plane and book business or first class flights and, and pay and reimburse them for that, but there's small and mid-sized businesses who can't afford that. And, and that doesn't mean that those travelers choosing Delta should be getting less. It's how do we meet the distinct and the unique needs of that? And, and what are the loyalty implications for that, the product implications, the service? Um, so while we're well into this, we're a decade into this, having come from Chapter 11, as I mentioned, in many ways, we're still in our infancy in terms of using customer data to inform and advise us on these distinct segments. And then I think if you look at some of the things we've done, we're starting to roll out more and more and more products and services that are designed around the unique needs of customers so that, so that we're offering greater choice. Um, and it isn't just a one-size-fits-all experience when you fly Delta. It's a lot of different choices um, that a customer can self-divine and, and choose and that the automation and the infrastructure from a digital standpoint presents and portrays and merchandises and, and then allows from, a, from an easy shopping and an easy booking standpoint. Well, Tim, that's, that's all my questions. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a really, uh, really fascinating exploration into all things Delta. Thank you. You bet, Matt. Thank you for your interest.